welcome back to the channel. This is Sean having fun repairs. We got a customer customer um, item sent in. I'm not gonna provide the uh, name or address, but uh, it's uh, looks to be a power supply that came out of a Klipsch uh, subwoofer, probably a down firing subwoofer. KSW-12 is the model number. Customer writes, the amplifier is not working following a power surge we had. The fuse plug socket broke after I tried to retrieve the old one and replace it. Fixing the motherboard power supply defect and fixing the fuse socket replacing if possible. So we got two things that need to be addressed on this. One, and he told me in the e email that uh, after a power surge it, it blew the fuse. So we need to find out, and he replaced it in blue again. So we need to find out what's causing the fuse to blow. And then second to that, we need to address the fuse socket. All right, so let me get this all out of the box and unwrapped. And uh, we'll take a look at it. So here we go, the best and the brightest. He, gave, he sent in the, I was about to say he gave, uh, he sent in the entire, uh, you know, assembly, what houses the power supply, on uh, AC side, on uh, high voltage, low voltage, DC. So we've got rectification occurring here. I see that's the AC full wave bridge rectifier right there. Uh, several safety caps. Whew. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so it's like more amplification occurring here. Maybe regulators, rectification. We definitely have rectification. There are those two diodes, so I'm assuming since those are just situ or situated on the board like that, that's probably for a uh, lower voltage. So that's it's probably unregulated. Then a rectified DC occurring here, or something along the lines. Um, then a lower voltage, kind of like what we had. With the other clips I worked on, I think it was, uh, you know, AC was rectified to like a 12 volt or something. I can't remember. And then further rectified to positive 9 volts and negative 9 volts. So there was at least, you know, as far as DC voltage goes, at least, maybe it was 24 volts and then positive 9 volts and negative 9 volts. There was at least three regulated voltages in the power supply. And uh, it appears just about everything's left in here. Um, do see that there's not a connector here and not one here, although this one is three pin and that one over here is two pin. They, they might not have been used. I'm not too sure. Here that or that one of these probably went to like the LED that turns on on the front of the speakers and something else I'm not too sure then we have our speaker hookups we see those uh, positive and negative sitting right here so I mean a bit different than the one that we previously worked on but not too shabby uh, but not too different sorry uh, here goes the fuse that he mentioned and yes it is broke there's actually no fuse in it, it looks like this was uh, torn or cut out or something of course we have uh, AC mains coming in uh, we feed to the switch. The switch turns on. The fuse is on the hot side, uh, so it's cut out there. So that got me to, you know, kind of just looking around here for a second because most likely the reason why it's blow the fuse is because of that power from the voltage spike coming in from the uh, lightning or whatever. But uh, we have a component right here that's rather interesting. Let me zoom in. All right, so... When I was looking, I noticed, oh man, look, something's blown out here. You can see the burn marks right there, that TH3. So this is going to be a thermistor. Um, you now you can scour online. There's, I don't think there's any schematics for this, but uh, I believe this, based upon what I researched online, is a 10 ohm, uh, 4 amp in rush um, thermistor. So it blew possibly because of the lightning but uh you know let's say if it was something after well after that's going to be this rectifier i believe so i'm not too sure this rectifier is going to be good um so we'll have to test that no other burn marks i mean our resistors all look good uh i'll need to test these caps before here 
Uh, of course, this one being a, like a X2 safety radio cap, 0.22K, 275 volts, X2 yeah, safety cap. Uh, a few more caps in over here, it appears. Inductor, a few more caps. Lots of caps, lots of caps. But uh, looking over, at least on this side, you know, just giving a good visual inspection, I don't see anything else that indicates to me that there would be uh, an, an issue. Okay, so like all of our electrolytics, I'm not seeing any leaking on the board. Uh, that's glue that's above that screw that you see right there. So a lot of pot potted material conformal coating or glue or something potting material uh, found on this PCB keep the uh, screws and stuff from rattling out and components from rattling around so well I'm not seeing anything that indicates to me that we have an issue I mean that we're gonna have an issue on this side of the board at least from a visual inspection but I can't power it up until I at least Take care of this component and figure out what to do with this uh, fuse holder. Of course, um, with it being broke the way it is, we're going to be looking at a full replacement. I'm not even seeing... Well, I see one side of the... Yeah, I'm not seeing a spring. It looks like everything in here just gooby gooped. Looks like it melted or something. Yeah, that's crazy. Yes, it's, it's gone, though. We're not reusing that. It's going to have to get replaced. But I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take this out, and I at least want to kind of check these ca these capacitors. I really want to check this uh, full weight bridge rectifier to make sure it's, it's okay. And if it happens to be okay, I think it's safe to say that, that the re reason why we're blowing the fuse now is because of this thermistor or what have you. And uh, we were probably going to be pretty safe here. But like I said, you know, once this part is resolved, uh, we can test out this amp. Most likely, hopefully. Not too sure about those missing cables, what they went to. I have to ask the customer, but um, hopefully we should be able to test this out. All right. I want to provide you uh, some more other quick updates. Uh, can I get this into some light? There we go. All right, so you can see I have the rectifier removed and now typical rectifier looks something similar to this right here, okay? With this being your full wave bridge rectifier, that is your positive or V out. This will be your return or negative rail. You see we have two diodes situated top and bottom, each used to rectify the AC. Take out the humps and make it a straight line, basically. So, if I look at this, the negative to the positive, which will be these outputs, should show two diodes in between, right? Uh, which way we go? Sorry, backwards. Yep. Got the anode and cathode backwards. And so you, you do have that. So at one terminal on the AC, you should have 0.5. And at the other terminal of the AC, you should have 0.5. And all the way across, you know, 1.9, that's pretty close. And if I was to do it the, this way as well, should be 0.5 here, 0.5 here. Yet when I had this in the board, I was shorted between my positive and negative. So I've gone to the board, and just so you can hear, yeah, we are shorted there. Uh, and I pretty much traced it back the last stage before we hit this uh, transformer here. Now this could be a low impedance transformer, which might be why we're having that issue. But we do have two transistors here. So this needs to go back in the board. I want to verify if these transistors are good or not uh, to see if that's what's shorting out the positive and negative lead. Now if it's the transformer, then most likely this is a low impedance transformer and we're good. But I need to check them anyways, okay? So, really all, barring that, we might not have any other issue on this side. 
uh, minus that thermistor being bad. Uh, like I said previously, at, at minimum, we're going to have to get a fuse holder and a thermistor. Uh, let me get those transistors out that are on the other side of the board. Uh, they're situated underneath here. Okay. So I'll need to remove these two screws here, 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 and here. Should be able to lift up this plate, and then I can desolder those transistors. Well, got those two transistors removed, Q3, Q4. These are IRS 740s. Um, I need to look them up. I can't remember what type of transistors they are off the top of my head, if I'm being honest. But if we go back to our 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 uh, rectifier here, we no longer have that short between the positive and negative. Now check these out. They are shorted. A-R-E, that is. I'm getting beckoned for dinner. So, we know that we at least need two IRF740 transistors. Uh, when I get them in, I'll discuss what type of transistors they are. Uh, we need a fuse holder, and then, what did I say, this thermistor up here, right here, which is going to be a 10 ohm, four amp, uh, style thermistor. We got the parts that we at least need to get on order for now to attempt to get this to power up, I think. And then we could go from there if there are any other issues. Well, parts have arrived. We've got our uh, little fuse holder. You can see that Mauser part number sitting right there. This is the one I chose. We'll find a way to make it work. Slightly different, just in form factor, but not in function. That should be a good uh, sub, I believe. One thing I'm going to take note of is the potting around our connectors here. And I'm willing to believe that this is potted and then wrapped in a uh, heat shrink to provide insulation in case there's any arcing between the leads when with the fuse in the center. I, I suppose that would have been used to keep said arcing from shorting coming across a, a different ground somewhere close to this board or something so we'll find a way to provide some form of uh, insulation as well on our replacement got our fuses in uh, there goes the part number you see right here okay a little handle with care package you know bus fuses uh, I can't remember what the I think they were 240 volt slow blow something like 2.5 amps or something I, I don't really remember um, but anyways you can look it up with those part numbers here goes our 10 ohm 4 amp clinch okay I said a thermistor that we needed this one with negative temperature coefficient Got two of them just in case if afterward we repair it blows again. I always want to take precautions and keep some extras of some things. So there are extra fuses as well. And then to replace these IFR 70s, which are actually in channel MOSFETs, ordered up several of them. Of course, I'm only charging the customer for what we are using, but there goes the part number you see right there. And we'll give them out of the box and test them. As a matter of fact, uh, let me demonstrate how to check your in channel MOSFETs using a uh, multimeter. Uh, the two on the left are bad in channel MOSFETs, 400 volt power MOSFETs. The one on the right is a good one. If I was, these are oriented drain, uh, excuse me, drain gate source, okay, drain D gate. G source S. If I was to check between the gate and the source, you see we got a 0.5 voltage drop 
with my multimeter on diode mode. Okay, here's the bad ones. Shorted, shorted, okay. Now, if I was to reverse the leads, we should have an open right there, as you saw. Of course, these are shorted, those are shorted. However, if I was to go from here to here, and then back over, you see we no longer have an open and we're getting a voltage drop, okay? So if I was to do the same thing from here to here, it shouldn't be shorted, but we're shorted over everything. Okay. Now if I was to reverse the leads again and do like this, okay, and we see we are back to basically switching where we have an open, that was me bumping the left, on one side and closed on the other. Open. Or sorry, closed and open. There we go. All right. Oh, just a way for you to see that uh, how these MOSFETs, how you can check them with a multimeter bar and what type of MOSFET it is. Obviously, these are definitely shorted. Um, now, there are some special things that I will consider when I go to put these. Let me turn off my light for a second. When I go to put them back in, zoom out a bit, okay? Actually, let me do this. All right. Look at the lead difference, okay? Now, if I was to just solder the new MOSFETs into the PCB, right there, without knowing the exact spacing between the board and this eyelet where our screw goes, I could perhaps make a mistake, end up not being able to fit the screw through those retainers here and have the MOSFET on this board. Ooh, dropping some things, hold on. So what I actually must do is I must make sure these MOSFETs are mounted first and then get this entire uh, heat sink assembly in place and the MOSFETs fed through the holes and then I'll solder them in afterwards. If you notice, you have an insulation pad on the back side of the MOSFET so that way this metal is not shortened out to anything. And then the uh, screw goes through the center. So, you know, I'm still in a temporary setup out here in my father-in-law's garage. Uh, don't have my overhead camera. I'm shooting everything on a cell phone. So I'm not going to do a segment where I try to, you know, do all this work and kind of a fast forward type thing. Uh, I'm just going to get things in there and then show you what it looks like afterwards. Uh, notice with my phone over recording that, you know, because of this autofocus, see that? Sometimes, see how it's blurry in the background? You, you don't get a, to see very well what's going on down here, especially once my hands are in the way of um, the camera lens, in between the camera lens and the device. So I'm going to get all these things mounted in there and then show you what we've done afterwards. And then we'll test it, uh, power it up for the first time since these components will be replaced. And we'll see if we still have issues or if we're going to be good to go. Just so you know how these things are mounted, the screw doesn't actually go through that eyelet of the uh, in-channel MOSFET. Ooh, the reflection is really messing with the focus. You can see the different the gap space in between there, which is actually good because I was wondering, even though these screws have a layer of paint that you know will provide insulation, how do you keep the screw from shorting out the backside of that MOSFET to the chassis of this? That's a little bit it was a little bit beyond me but now it makes perfect sense because these are just clamping them in place and pressing them against the board so should make it easier to get these in and aligned we'll see how it goes well unfortunately even though i could have sworn i double checked the size multiple times before ordering them uh, the fuses i ordered were slightly too small for that uh, new fuse holder that i put in there but i do um, unfortunate as that is, I do have spares that I was able to put in there from out of a collection I've been keeping. So, 
again i'm only charging the customer for the parts i'm using and then you know labor and shipping uh let's move over to the device i currently don't have power applied but uh we got the new fuse holder in and i use uh hot glue as a potting material it will serve its purpose we have the new thermistor in as you can see right there we have all the uh in channel mosfets put in and the heat sheet on uh the shielding or heat sink on and then what i'm going to do is you know i'm going to have this kind of situated above it and i'm going to power it up and just monitor make sure nothing gets super hot on here because that could potentially indicate a future failure failure but if it powers up and it seems to be doing okay i'll inject a low frequency tone into it and then we'll monitor the output with the uh, oscope okay so going over the board we got a small transistor and i'll put it down there it is getting a wee bit hot that might be a concern we'll find out here in a second um appears to be the same thing on this little board over here again i'm just kind of monitoring for now those uh lm or what are those l7915 scv uh, probably transistors or darlington power transistors um something along those lines maybe mosfets as well those seem to begin a little bit warm but not too hot really my only major concern is this one right here i mean that's a over 120 degrees um anything over on the side all right so we got surface mount transistors i mean they're a bit warm this ic right over here is a bit warm but i'm not seeing like shorted caps or anything excuse me oh let's check down here all right so that's gonna be okay so that's a surface mount transistor sitting right there to the right of these capacitors getting warm but i'm not seeing it as like a super big hot spot 130 113 that guy back there is super cool although the uh resistors beside it are a little warm i don't know this this might actually be i mean there there is white 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 i don't know it might be fine um i think we're going to be okay but at least i've noticed some hot spots on the board in case if we still do have issues so those are could be areas we look at next but let's get a tone into this and let's see how it does well it seems to be working just fine i've got uh my sigjin set up for 80 hertz one volt and uh with the potentiometer max we're getting what 52.8 volts and 80 hertz on the oscope we got a nice symmetry on our sine wave here and if i decrease the potentiometer It's one of those step potentiometers, so it's, you know, it's not incredibly fluid, but we, we definitely have nice linearity in the range of the pot. Maybe a little bit of a jump right there. But, uh, yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Now, I'm not going to keep it up at max, especially with it not on a load such as a speaker. But uh, I've had this sitting here on the bench running for at least uh, 10 minutes now and it seems to be doing pretty good and I'm and I'm fairly happy about that. So all that's really left to do is kind of clean this up a bit, um, get put back together and, and send off to the customer and I'm pretty sure they're going to be super, super happy with this. Anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave your comments as appropriate. I try to respond to all the ones I can uh, channel is growing so it is getting a bit harder to keep up with those things 
you know and uh, still trying to get videos regularly but uh you know i started back to work i the job i'm doing is i'm up at like 3 30 a.m uh doing uh, a specialist job as a uh, electrician currently uh, my wife and i are still looking for a house and everything so you know no permanent setup but uh we're, but we're getting there we're making progress but that's uh that's not related to this video i was just don't know why i needed to to share that bit of news but we're getting there anyways now uh, if you're new to this channel please consider subscribing if you like the content you're seeing watch my other videos you might find something that of interest for you but uh that all being said oh and if you want to help out the channel channel i've moved away from patreon i'm just keeping everything exclusively on youtube uh consider becoming a member uh early release videos are in membership as well as training videos uh, that that I have done in the past and need to get started back up on again here at some point to finish out the AC series of course the older DC series I'm slowly releasing but uh, either way um, thank you for watching take care and goodbye Mark?